Hi everyone, we've been doing examples of wave addition in class where we have uh, wave shapes and we have to add them together to understand what the resulting wave shape is. And so uh, several of you have asked if I do a couple uh, examples. So we did several in class and I gave you some on homework but I wanted to go through another one here so you could watch me do the explanation again. So let's imagine I have the following two wave shapes and I want to add them together to find out what the resulting shape is. Okay, so uh, anytime we do this, uh, as uh, always, I try and indicate, if I draw the pulses for you, where the equilibrium line is. So you can see the equilibrium lines there. When you draw uh, your summed shapes, or when you draw pulses yourself, uh, I advise that you also always start with an equilibrium line. So let me go ahead and put my equilibrium line there. When you're adding wave shapes in particular, the equilibrium line is really important because that's the line that defines where the uh, wave pulses are added in reference to. Okay, so one of the techniques that I use to kind of help me understand what I'm doing and how the waves should add together is I imagine the heights, the amplitudes of the waves being actual numbers. So when you're doing this on homework, for instance, it's convenient to do this with uh, a grid uh, on gridded paper. Um, this is not gridded paper that I'm working on here, but you can see there are lines, so I'll kind of use those as an amplitude. So for instance then, what I would do is I would always call the equilibrium line zero for value, okay, and similarly for the equilibrium line that I drew down here, I'm going to call that zero. And so then here, you see this wave has some amplitude, I might call that total maximum amplitude it gets two plus one so that's one two lines here on my page so that's a plus one amplitude if I go down here and I look at this pulse I see the maximum amplitude that it gets to is also the plus one but I see the minimum amplitude that it gets to is minus one okay so I'm going to use those values in these wave pulses to do my addition down here okay now when you're adding wave pulses, it's very convenient to mark places where you know uh, values or where you know big changes occur. Now I've drawn these two pulses so they have exactly the same spatial extent this way and then all we're worrying about is adding their uh, vertical amplitudes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some vertical lines here between the pulses to help make it clear where I'm adding the pulses together and where they're going to go on my summed plot down here. Okay, so it's obvious to take the ends of the pulses. Okay, so those are the obvious ones to take. And then the question is, should I have any other reference lines? And the truth is, you can have as many reference lines as you want. Um, if I drew a zillion reference lines here, it would make it a little complicated. So let me just put one more reference line in, and that's going to be the reference line that goes right through this point right here. Okay, so I'm going to draw a reference line from the top pulse down through the bottom pulse and then all the way down to my summed plot. Okay? Okay, so now what you do is you go along and everywhere along the uh, plots you want to represent the sum of this pulse plus this pulse and draw it down here. And so what I usually do is I make a series of dots to kind of give me the general trend of what the shape's going to do and then I play connect the dots and if I do a series of dots and then I can't tell what's going on then I can always go back and add more dots okay so let's do it for the three lines that we have here okay so on this pulse right on this green line the value is plus one and on this pulse right on the green line the value is zero so that means on the plot down here okay to this side it's all going to be zero Okay, so let me go ahead and just draw that in. But then here, I get 0 plus 1, so I need to be up at 1. So I'm going to put a little dot there. Okay, let's go to my next green line. So here, the value is 0 and plus 1. So again, I'm going to have a dot here at plus 1. And then here on this side, I have 0 and plus 1. So again, I'm going to have plus 1. And over here, past the waves, it's all going to be zero again. So you see, those three dots don't really tell me much, right? They were the obvious points to choose on these waves, but they don't really tell me much about the shape. If I were to just play connect the dots, it would look just like this pulse. 
and that clearly can't be right. So I could draw more green lines, but let me just kind of guesstimate where they should be. So let's go halfway between my two green lines and ask what's happening, okay? So halfway between, this one is plus one, and this one is minus one. So one minus one is zero, so halfway in between, I have to get back to zero. I could do the same thing here. This wave, halfway between my two green lines, is plus one. This wave is also plus one. So one plus one is two. So if I go down to my plot here, here's one, here's two. Okay? Now at this point, I'm going to guess what the shape is, although if you were confused, you could measure and plot more points, but what I know is this is a constant plus one that I'm going to add a curved shape to. So here, my shape's going to be curved, and I claim it's going to look like this. And then here, my shape's also going to be curved, and I claim it's going to look like this. Okay? Does that make sense? Well, it's this wave shape shifted up everywhere by a constant factor one. And that's exactly what I've drawn here. Okay? So, it has to be continuous, so I connect the ends. Okay? And there we have our summed shape that comes from adding these two wave pulses together. Okay? I hope that's helpful, and we'll see you again soon for some more examples.